Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here. And today is our follow-up day. Um, no specific date, of course, but it is Sunday morning. So I'm hoping that this will get posted and uploaded by um, sort of mid-afternoon on Sunday. And I see that my camera is shaking, so I'm just going to move it over just slightly so hopefully I won't be touching it. Alrighty, um, so there are a few things to go over. I have uh, some comments that were made in, in uh, some of the videos that I wanted to, to uh, share because they, they were questions that were asked and some other comments that I'd like to share. Um, so to start off, I'm going to say that, uh, the response to, uh, Techniques Tuesday back to basics has been fantastic. I am so excited. I think I'm more excited than you are, uh, to start doing, um, Techniques Tuesday. And I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I think it, like I said, it's not just for newbies, but it's, it's for, uh, even seasoned, uh, junk, junk journalers who might want to put one of these books together just to have as a reference book. Uh, but I'll get back into that a little bit further uh, after. Uh, I want to talk about Monday. Monday is the first day of our nesting uh, journal. And for those of you that are new to the channel, the nesting journal is a journal that sits on top of a hardcover journal that we've already made. Now the hardcover journal has a 12 part series to it. Um, so if you want to do the journal first, you, you can, if not, you can still do the nesting journal. It will be very, uh, simple to put together. And I'm just giving you the information of what you need to bring to, to, uh, put together, uh, on Monday. So on Monday, if you want to uh, follow along and work on it with me, um, for, for the journal, I said you needed to have either some envelopes or some cardstock. Sorry, I got a big pile of stuff here. So this is uh, my journal as it is right now. Um, it, you know, it's got a lot of stuff stuffed into it, so it's a little bit uh, bulky right now. Um, but the nesting journal will be decorated like this journal or different, however you want. And it, the idea is that it will sit on top of the journal and then the whole thing will be tied. So it'll be like a bundle and, and it'll be quite... Um, uh, um, um, embellished so that we, we can have this a decorative book that would sit on a coffee table or on a desk or something um, uh, that is quite attractive. And then you can undo the book, take this one uh, right inside this one, or you can write in the main journal as well. Um, so it's just a little add on to give you extra journaling space within the book. And it will also have some decorative elements and things in it. And so we are starting out with a manila envelope. Now, depending on the size of journal you're doing, the hardcover book, mine was quite a large one at, at uh, eight and a half by 11 or almost nine by 11 and a half, I think is the finished size. So this manila envelope is a nine by 12. And if you fold it in half, it becomes a six uh, by nine, which is perfect to fit regular sized eight and a half by 11 paper inside, you know, folded in half to go in the book. So these are the pages that we would most likely use for our signature or signatures. However, you probably have a lot of leftover bits and pieces of paper from doing your uh, journal. So do try to incorporate some of those papers in there as well. So keep that in mind when we are putting together the book. Uh, but for now, you just need um, the manila envelope. And if a manila envelope is too big for you, boy, I got everything teetering here on this desk. Um, I'm just going to move a couple things over here so that I'm not sliding all over the place here. Because I, I keep each journal in a, in a large plastic bag and all of the parts with it so, so that it sits like this um, with the journal in it. Um, otherwise, everything gets lost in the pile. So if you don't have a nine by 12 manila envelope, or if that's too big for you to use, my suggestion of course, was to use uh, a couple of smaller envelopes and we will put these together on the day of class, uh, to, to, uh, and I will show you how to do that, uh, to work on, or, you know, maybe you have two other smaller envelopes that you want to use instead. So something not quite as big, 
that's entirely up to you. And it also depends on the size of your journal. Um, if you don't have manila envelopes to work with, the alternative, of course, is to have a good weight of cardstock, you know, eight and a half by 11 folded in half, or, um, you know, maybe you have a, uh, uh, cardstock scrapbook paper that you can get the nine by 12 size if that's what you need, or you can cut it down to smaller sizes based on what, what you do want for your finished piece. Try with a couple of pieces of paper, see how you like the size and then pre-cut it and have it ready to go. So this will be like a soft cover journal. It won't have, um, any, any weight to it, any, um, sturdiness to it. It'll be soft, but by the time we're finished doing the cover, it's, it's going to be quite, um, sturdy. And to do the cover. Now, if you've done vision boards or master boards, uh, where you've collaged with different kinds of paper, you use some book pages, some scrapbook papers, some uh, page elements, some, uh, images, bring all that to the table with you. I like to work with, you know, maybe two or three, uh, hardcover books where I take out the pages and I tear them up. You know, I have some music sheets and, and, uh, different kinds of, uh, pieces of paper and odds and ends. You know, I have some green here. I have some colored papers. So it's, it's just going to be, um, what we use as a base to, to get your journal, uh, cover started. So once we've covered the base inside and out, then we will do the, the uh, fabric decorating if that's what you choose to do is for your finish to match your book. Uh, but this is the kind of paper that you would bring to the table. Just scrappy bits. Maybe you've got some scrap pages in your, in your leftover from your uh, hardcover book that you were working on. It really doesn't matter what you use. We're just covering it to give it some strength and getting it covered so it doesn't look like a manila envelope. And then we will cover it uh, decoratively afterwards in, the, in another part. So those are the things you want to bring. Now, as for glue, I use my glue sticks to glue the papers um, initially. And then I will probably use a uh, sealer or Mod Podge over top afterwards to uh, really make it sturdy and, and uh, have a nice finish. And then of course, you know, you use your glue stick, you don't need a brush, but if I'm going to use a brush for the Mod Podge or the sealer that I put on top, I usually use one of, one of these. Um, and these, these are uh, makeup brushes that you can pick up in your local dollar store, uh, in the makeup department. And they're very inexpensive and they're great for, mine is still full of glue. Um, they're great for spreading paint, for spreading glues, uh, putting on sealer. And the nice part about it is you just let the glue harden and then peel it off afterwards. Um, I mean, you can rinse it under the sink if you like, but I just usually leave mine on the counter, be, which is what I always did with my brushes, except my brushes would get hard and I'd have to throw them out. At least with this, with it being a silicone brush, um, you just peel off the stuff afterwards. So these are the things that I would bring to the table on Monday and we can get started. Uh, I do have some techniques as to how I cover these, these, um, uh, envelopes and, and, um, make a master board. So we'll make one together. Um, so that is for Monday's class. I'm really excited about that. Like I said, the response has been fabulous. So I'm looking forward to working on this with all of you that are doing the hardcover journals. Now I'm going to put that aside. And then I'm going to talk about Techniques Tuesday. Techniques Tuesday is where we're going to be creating a journal from scratch. And we're going to fill it with really junky paper. Uh, I mean, total junk paper. You're going to clear out your, your uh, recycling bin. You're going to clear off your desk. You're going to clear out all the ugly papers that you don't like anymore. And those are the papers we're going to use inside. Uh, and the reason for that, it's not about the paper. It's not about the journal. It's about what we're going to put inside. And that's, um, we're going to create a journal with three to four signatures. And when I say three to four, it depends on the size of, uh, of, uh, cover you make. And, um, in, when we put the signatures in, we're going to do it Midori style, which is sort of a traveler's notebook style so that you can slip them in and out as you need to. And then thirdly, it, the, each journal page, once we've got the journal made and put together each journal page, we're going to do something on it on a step-by-step -step every Tuesday forever. 
until we run out of things to do. So, so the whole idea with this book is to have a collection of pockets and tags and tabs and embellishments and belly bands and snippets and clusters and all these things that, um, we use in our journals. And this way you have a collection of all different kinds so that whenever you're working on a journal and you have a blank page and you say, Oh, I, I would like to put a pocket on this, or I would like to put a belly band, but I don't know what I want. You can refer back to your, your techniques journal and look at the different ones that you've made. And, and sometimes you'll be pleasantly surprised and go, Oh yeah, I forgot I made that. Um, so that is one of the things that this techniques journal will be used for. Um, and, and so, so it will sit on your desk. And as we fill up one, we'll go on to another and another and you know, until we have a whole series of, of techniques for putting our journals together. Um, so th it should be interesting. And like I said, we've had some great response to it already. So that just gets me over the top excited with all of you. Um, and I hope it's something for the newbies as well as those that are more seasoned that have done a lot of these things. So to get started for that, you're going to need the same basic materials as far as papers, like scrappy papers to, to cover your journal. You're going to need, um, your glues, your glue stick, your, your, um, if you use, um, art glitter glue, I don't know. I just use tacky glue. Um, and you're going to need, um, your glue stick and any other type of glues that you like to use. Uh, I would also recommend some Mod Podge. And it's not, again, not so much about the book, uh, but it is about giving it some extra strength. Um, so to, to create this book in particular, I'm going to be using a cereal box. Uh, sorry, no brand names are required on this, <laughs> but you get the point. Um, so I went out and bought a huge box of Raisin Bran because, you know, I got to take one for the team. And so now I have my box and it is, uh, one of those big wide ones. So this is going to make a huge spine just to show you, this is like just over three inches, three and a quarter. So we can easily have one, two, three, I would say, I would say four signatures if you're going with this size. If you go with a smaller size, we'll, we'll, we'll say a minimum of three, but even, even if it gets too full, we can always go on to a second book um, because these books are just to sit on your desk and look pretty until you need them. Um, they're not books that you're going to make to give away. Although, you know, you may want to give it to a friend if you're making two of them. Um, but, but these books are for you. So it's not so much about, um, the, the, um, size of book because you, you can adjust the size by making another book if you so choose. But I'm using a raisin bran or this, this large uh, cereal box because I want to be able to make my book six inches wide and I want it to be nine inches tall. And that's because I want to be able to use eight and a half by 11 sheets to make my signatures. It's not about the signature pages. So it doesn't have to be pretty paper. It can be recycled paper. It can be catalog papers. It can be flyers, but I want them to be eight and a half by 11 in size so that when I fold them, they are five and uh, five and a half by eight and a half. And they'll fit within that nine by six size book. So, so that is my plan and this way they can, they, they, there's lots of room that in case they stick out a little bit. Uh, so this is my plan for this box, but <clears throat> the box itself, we will cut or, or I will cut it on online so you can see how I cut it and how I open it up. Um, but the box itself to me is not strong enough. Um, it's still, even though it's, it's good cardboard to me, uh, I still want it to be a little bit stronger. So I'm going to suggest that you bring some cardstock to the table. Um, cardstock being, you know, anything that's a little bit heavier than paper. If you don't use cardstock, um, like for example, I have this, this is a book cover. It's cardstock weight. Um, I would like to have a couple of them to, to glue down to the, the, um, cardboard first on both sides. So when you think of having a, uh, a six by nine size, um, book, uh, cover with a cardstock glued on this side and on the inside of it, as well as, as the inside and outside on the back side of the, the, uh, 
box and a piece that goes in the spine on the inside and the outside. This is just to reinforce the box before we start using it. And you could use a file folder. If you have file folders, you could cut those down to size to, to glue on top and the bottom and, and on the, the spine. And the re reason for that is if you're going to make this book, um, we're going to be filling it. Every page is going to have page elements. So it's going to get heavy, you know, um, and you want that cover to be sturdy. You want to be able to pick that co cover up off the, the shelf, open it up, flip around, look for what you're looking for, and, and be able to use it over and over again. So it, it, if you make it sturdy right from the get-go, you, you don't have to worry about it falling apart. The nice thing about this cardboard is that it's already scored for your hinges, like for, for opening and closing the book, which is awesome. So you don't have that extra uh, worry uh, to, to put in a, um, a, a separate spine or to, to uh, try to hinge your books together. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that is an awesome option. Now, it doesn't have to be a cereal box. You can go up and down the aisles of Dollarama and, you know, if, <laughs> if you don't want to look suspicious, just um, uh, go to the office section first and put a ruler in, in your cart and then measure to make sure you've got at least nine inches by six inches for the size of box. Um, they'll think you're weird. I did that because um, I was trying to guess at, at the size of boxes and I thought, no, just go get a ruler from the other section. Um, so, so yeah, so you may want to go to the dollar store and pick up a box that's something else, maybe a box of cookies or co crackers or, or um, a box of chips. If some chips still come in boxes, I don't know. In Canada, Old Dutch still does, I think. Uh, rare occasion you can find them. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but but yeah, so you, you just want to find a box that's a good size. You can make it smaller if you want to make it smaller. The only thing is, is that, you know, we're going to be making notes in these books. We're going to be making all kinds of pockets and things to put in the books, as well as, you know, we're going to be making belly bands and sticking things in the belly bands. So you want to be able to have enough room uh, to work in. So, so do try to make it as large as you can, if you can't go nine by nine by six. And then um, the other part uh, in saying that is that, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Yeah. Oh yeah. So if you don't have a box or maybe by Tuesday, you won't have a chance to get out to the store to get a box. You can do the same thing by um, putting together some file folders and creating uh, the spine. Um, I would suggest that you create the spine right in the book. And I can demonstrate that on the day of class because I don't have a file folder handy here. No, I don't have one. Oh, I do. I do have a file folder right here. So you can use a file folder, but it's much thinner, much, much thinner than, than uh, a, ch a chipboard box from, from cereal. So you, you can create a spine. Uh, for example, you would say, okay, if this is nine inches, maybe you've got to fold it uh, to create your spine. So you'll have to play with what you have for, for um, folders to make your spine. But it certainly is doable, and I think a file folder, yeah, that's actually perfect. So you'll have six and a half, you can just trim it down, and then you'd be able to get at least a two inch, two and a half inch spine, depending on how you fold it. And it's going to take a little bit of work to ease it into to place. You just want to have a one piece um, uh, cover. Instead of trying to glue a strip uh, to two other pieces, that's, you know, that takes a little bit more time and you have to be a little bit more advanced in your junk journal making to get to that point. So I would strongly suggest that if you can't get a cereal box, then pick, use a file folder. But with a file folder, you're going to have to still build on that box, on that, that cover to make it sturdy. So for that, uh, option, I would suggest maybe some corrugated cardboard would, would work fine as a, as an extra to glue on either side to make it a little bit more sturdy. And, um, in both cases, you don't have to make it come right to the edge, but I'll, I'll get into more detail on the day of just make sure you have some cardboard or file folders or a cereal box or a combination of both. 
and some cardstock. So these are the things that you'd need to work with on Tuesday to get us started. We're just going to get the book started and then hopefully by next week we'll be starting to fill it. It'll be so much fun. So that's my information on, on that. I've got things teetering again all over the place here on my desk. So I hope, um, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to having you join me. And if you are joining me, do, do leave a message below saying that you are, because the more I see it, the more I excited I get. <laughs> so then I want to go back to, um, some questions that people have had, uh, lately on, on my comments or, you know, things that they've said that I just want to further enhance. Um, I've had several comments on my thrifty videos from people saying they would love to see the stuff that I pick up for, for my market booth. And I had, I just didn't think anybody would find it interesting, but oh, contraire. Um, I've had many comments saying they would like to see what I, what I pick up for my markets. Um, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I would probably do a separate video called market halls. Um, I don't know if it would be a regular weekly thing. Uh, what I would do is I would gather up a bunch of stuff, uh, until I have it, um, to, enough to show you. And then I would do the video. The only thing I will refrain from, and I hope you understand this is I will not discuss price. Um, because, uh, you know, I do have to go and sell this at the market and I don't want people seeing me picking up things for very low priced and selling it for very high price. Because a lot of times, uh, you know, I used to be in the antique business and, and collectibles. And so a lot of times, uh, people don't know when they're, when they're thrifting, what is out there. And I have picked up things very inexpensively and, uh, turned around and flipped it for, you know, 20, 30, $50, depending on what it is. And some things would really surprise you. And I also find a lot of times that, um, when you're out thrifting, things come in there that are covered in grime and dirt and years of cooking dust. And you know what cooking dust is like, it's sticky stuff. Um, and so people, they don't seem to see, um, the beauty or the value in something that is just horrible <laughs> to look at. And so a lot of times I do see that. And so I'll bring it home and, you know, it looks awful and I uh, give it a good bath in some water and soap and scrub it up. And then I'll find out that I have a really nice piece. And many times I brought things home and my husband will say, what on, where are you going to sell that? What is your plan for that? And then as soon as I clean it up, he's like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And then I will go and search online uh, for prices for things. And yeah, you'd be surprised at sometimes the price. Um, in my market travels, I also pick up generic stuff, um, things that uh, people, um, you see them all the time, but you don't see them necessarily in the same light as you do, um, from a thrift shop to a, an antique shop. Um, there are simple things like bowls and graters and, uh, cooking utensils that, uh, people overlook at the thrift shop. Um, maybe because they don't need it or they, they don't see the value in reselling it. Um, in my booth, I sell a lot of cooking supplies. So yeah, I'm, I'm always eager to find some different, uh, measuring cups and, and different things, not necessarily of value as, um, antiques or collectibles, but more unique in, and in value that, uh, if you had to go out and buy it, you'd pay three, four times the price for it. Um, and, and compared to what I'm selling it for and compared to what I bought it for. So that, that's, gives you some ideas of, of where I will go with that, you know, and I can explain a lot of that to, to people. Cause I know some of you have commented too, that you have your own market booth and you want to see what other people pick. Um, and yeah, that's great, but I want to see your market booths too. So start sharing those links or, uh, showing me where to find you because maybe you pick things that are different than what I pick. Um, so yeah, I will, I will do some, you know, I've got, a uh, a few things kicking around that I have to take to, to market 
uh, soon. So maybe I'll gather them all together and do a, a market booth video or a market haul is what I will call them. So that for those of you that aren't interested in, in watching them because they're not junk journal related, uh, you can pass over them. They will be called market halls or like market thrift halls or whatever. Um, so that I can, uh, showcase those things for people who are interested in seeing them. Um, and, and then you can bypass it if you're not interested. Um, another comment I get a lot about is cutting up clothing. And yes, I do plan to do a series on cutting up clothing. Um, but I can't do everything all at once. I also have a lot of, um, uh, one day, uh, you know, little mini tutorial, uh, tidbits and things like that, that I would like to, uh, slip in here and there as well. Um, so as soon as we are finished with the nesting journal, uh, and, and I'm, I'm thinking it'll take about six to eight weeks to finish the nesting journal in between that, I'm going to, uh, Manitoba for two weeks for a sort of a mini vacay and, uh, some quality friend time and some family time. Woohoo! Um, it's some scrapbooking, crafting, junk journaling, thrifting time with my gal pals. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, and food. There are certain foods I want to go back to Manitoba for. Rye bread. Uh, we cannot get uh, good bread here in New Brunswick. Sorry, New Brunswick bakers, but I have not found a bread yet that makes me happy. Um, rye bread. Um, there's a, a pizza in a place called St. Pierre. Uh, they have a bakery there. I want to have St. Pierre bakery pizza. So there's a whole bunch of things that are added to the list of things to do in, in Manitoba. <laughs> um, Ruth and Lori uh, Wood, I think it's Ruth Atkins. You're both from Manitoba. If you want to private message me, maybe we can hook up together. Uh, it would be fun to, to meet up with you and maybe have a thrifting date. Um, a few other little things here. Now I had a uh, Margaret, uh, Taylor. I hope it's okay, Margaret, that I mention your name. She had, well, she publicly asked these questions, so it's not like it's a secret. Um, she had a few questions for me. She said, uh, that I had showed a book in my video that I said was the perfect size for journals and what size is it measurements. Um, it was this book you're referring to this side of innocence. It, it wasn't that it's the perfect size for journals. Um, it is the perfect size for journal ephemera. Uh, so, uh, I will, uh, take the pages and make envelopes and, um, pockets and journal cards and tags, uh, the list goes on. So it is for me, the perfect size and the perfect weight to work with. I brought another, another big book to the table too, that I like. It's a little bit larger. This was the one I said was a little bit more current in time. Uh, so this one, I have to go back and read the pages before I actually use it in, in my artwork. But these types of books are perfect for making ephemera for your journals. And so I would, again, if you're going to be doing Techniques Tuesdays, I would suggest that you stock up on a couple of these hardcover books that have yellowed pages, that have a lot of pages, um, because this is an incredible source for ephemera. And a lot of you will say, oh, I would never use a whole book in my life. Oh, if you hang out with me, you will be. Um, so, so at least pick up one or two. It doesn't hurt to pick up a music book or a hymnal if you can find one. Um, an atlas. Um, these are all books that are great for making ephemera. So, so don't hesitate to purchase them. Uh, you know, you can pick these up very inexpensively. You know, a dollar, maybe two dollars. But if you can think that a book like this uh, has, let's just see here. Let's look at the last page. It has 499, so uh, 500 pages, because if you turn it over, it's 500. So 500 sides equals 250 sheets. That sounds like 250 pieces of ephemera. Well, there are some that might use two sheets uh, altogether. So let's knock it down to 200 pieces of, of, of ephemera. A lot of you are going to say, oh, no way. Oh, way. Um, uh, automatically, um, 200 pieces of ephemera is only 20 things to me. 20 things. 
you know, so it could be five uh, styles of pockets. It could be five styles of tags. It can be a couple of journal cards, uh, a couple of bookmarks and some belly bands. So that's, uh, you know, it doesn't, it's only 20 things that you're going to make 10 times. And if you follow my videos, um, if you look at my ephemera videos where I, um, uh, have an empty ephemera box, I, I, sh and then we, we, um, I think there's a follow-up video to the empty ephemera box where we start to create ephemera. If you go back to that uh, video, you will see how easy and how quickly it is to create ephemera and have it ready for your journals. And, and, um, um, y you will use up a book very, very quickly. Anybody who says to me that they throw out a book isn't, isn't doing enough junk journals, uh, and they're using other materials where this is all free, uh, you know, very inexpensive and easy to source and easy to decorate. Um, you know, I make jokes about it, a bird, a butterfly, a flower and a tab uh, tag and you uh, or a label and you you've got a an instant uh, piece of ephemera so stay with me on this one and you will find that you will use this so that is what i meant um margaret when i talked about um that it was the perfect uh, book for a journal for making journals um as far as measurements if you really want measurements this is about eight and a half um actually so it would be perfect for a journal and and it's by five and a half so so you could um uh, put two of these together quite nicely to make a journal page this one's a little bit longer at nine and a half by uh six um, but this is stuff we will get into as we get closer to to uh techniques tuesday you know as we go along so another thing you had asked is, do you take the pages out as you need, or do you pull them all apart and file them somewhere? Well, I don't file them. Uh, another good book actually is a reader's digest, those condensed reader's di digest, great for ephemera. And again, good quality paper. I don't file them uh, because when I uh, take a book off the shelf, it is automatically cut and dissected. I keep the covers for other journal making. And, um, I keep the end pages, you know, if they have pretty pictures like this, and I also keep the blank pages for using on the backs of journal cards, but then I go right into the whole book. And usually if I'm, if I'm dissecting a book, it's, uh, either because I've run out of pages for making, um, um, master boards, I've run out of pages of, uh, or of ephemera for, for certain things, maybe there's a pocket that I've used up and so I want to replace it. And then the book just sits on my desk and this is the one I work out of. But I usually have two or three on the go at the same time sitting on my desk uh, or buried in my desk, which is right where it is right now. Oh my gosh, if you guys could only see it. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't actually put it away or store it. It just sits on my desk and I use it. Um, and then if it's a whole brand new book, I have, uh, two, four, six, eight, I have eight bookshelves that my books are piled onto or into. Um, and if you saw that mess, you'd be like horrified, <laughs> but yeah, I just stuff them in there or stuff it beside it if it's too full, because I have quite a huge collection of books. So, so, um, uh, whenever I'm ready for another one, I just grab it. And usually, it, you know, by the time I've gone to through two of these books, I've already picked up two more. So, so it's a never ending vicious circle. Um, but, but it's, it's fun and you will see, you will use lots of these books too. So then you asked, um, uh, about buying a dress and, oh, I did, I did talk about that, but, but, but just briefly that, yes, I will start the series of clothing, um, probably right after we do the, the, um, nesting journal, it will be Mondays where I repurpose clothing. And in the past, well, I no, even now I, I still, uh, like I dissect the whole garment and I don't just cut off the sleeves and cut off the bottom of the skirt or cut off the trim. I dissect it with, with a stitch ripper and a blade and I take apart everything, um, and each garment is different. So I can't even say that there's a, a set rule of how I do it. But, um, in the past I used to keep one or two big chunks, uh, 
that I would fold up nicely, you know, square it off and fold it up nicely to put away in case I wanted to use it for another project. But I realized that, you know what, when, when I dissect a garment, I want to use it until it's gone, gone, gone. And I'm not keeping it because there are a million other garments out there in the world to go and salvage and, and repurpose. So there's no more keeping my special fabric because, um, everything is precious, right? <laughs> the only thing I'm still precious on is that ribbon, um, that I showed you back at, at Christmas time. And that is still my precious until we start making some. Um, but yeah, as far as the garment, when I, when we do start those garment classes uh, or tutorials online, I will, uh, first dissect it. And then there will be several follow-ups with how I use it. And, and depending on the garment, it could be journal covers. It could be handbag, co uh, covers for, for, cause I make handbags. Um, it could be, um, fabric that I use to shabby up for ribbons where I just tear a whole sheet into pieces for doing ribbons. It could be linings for both my, my, um, handbags or linings for, for journals, like the inside of cover of a journal. It could be used for making snippet rolls, snippets, clusters, um, the, the fabric can be used for salvage for the trims, um, for making, um, whole snippet rolls. Um, I think I said that, didn't I? Uh, so, so there's a, a multiple uses, even making bags to store a journal in or bags for inside the journal. It could be for, uh, flips for flipping up in a journal page. Um, the, or it could be pockets. It could be trims on pockets and be trims on the edge of a, of a page. Uh, so there's so many things that we can use a single garment for, um, that I will again, individually take one garment apart and I, and I will do several different types in a short time period. So you have different ideas. There are things that I do with a men's, uh, cotton shirt that, uh, will just blow you away. Um, I have, you know, of course the sari dresses and, and different netting and, and children's dresses, little girls dresses have so much tool underneath and, and, uh, flu flu and lace and stuff and, and pieces of velvet and making flowers it's again, there's no end of things that we can, we can do with garments. So each week will be dependent on what the garment is as to how I dissect it and how I explain what I use it for. Uh, for example, some fabric could be used for making beads, uh, you know, boho, boho tassels. Uh, yeah, I could go on and on. Um, <laughs> so that series will start uh, my guess is between, you know, finishing the nesting journal and going on holidays that it probably won't start till the end of April, beginning of May. But once we start on that, I will try to keep that on a regular basis as long as there's interest, of course, but I will try to keep it on a regular basis, you know, maybe every Monday, uh, for a while and until we see, uh, how things are going and how other things, uh, show up in the, the, um, creative side. So that is that. And then you asked, uh, again, how to store that fabric. Uh, my, my point is to use it, abuse it or lose it. Um, so, uh, then you say, how do you, how do you store all these things in your hall? Um, <laughs> okay. Well, it depends on what it is. Uh, uh, fabric gets, uh, washed right away. Any, any type of fabric, because you know, my concerns are where was it and what am I you know, bringing into my house? So everything gets washed. Um, on occasion, I, uh, like I did in the last video, I did take those embellishments off before I threw the garment in the wash. Uh, but yeah, everything gets washed. Uh, it depends on what the fabrics are for. Um, they get stored, uh, or, or set aside in the pile for different uses. So I, I really can't give you a straight answer on that one, uh, at this point. Um, any fabric I do have, uh, in storage that are, is in my, my studio right now is stored by colors and, and it's very loosely stored by colors. Um, I, I don't really want to show you at this point cause things are a little bit messy, but I will get to a studio video again. I promise. Yeah. I've been working on uh, cleaning up certain areas. Um, if it's books, they go on the bookshelf unless I'm ready to use it. Um, if it's ephemera, I have places to store ephemera. I have a lot of stuff. And so, yes, I have to disperse it right away. Otherwise it just ends up in the pile and I never get 
to the bottom because I constantly pick things up. So the ephemera, there's ephemera where, for example, if I have a package of playing cards, I have a um, particular container that just holds playing cards and it, you know, it's stacked. And then I have another one to hold um, score cards and flash cards and tags, envelopes, all those things, little paper bags, uh, index cards, CD envelopes. Like I'm just looking through, I can see one box right now. And so these things are all stored together. So if I, you know, if I do come across another package of playing cards, it does go into the box. Yeah, there's, you know, the boxes are all pretty full, but I do the ephemera packs. I uh, send out happy mail and I do, uh, you know, filter through that stuff on a regular basis. Um, I have a whole container just of wine labels because my husband makes wine. So we have no shortage of wine labels, um, but there are multiple uses for wine la labels, not just for journal cards and for ephemera in your books, but um, other things that I use them for. So yeah, everything does have a place and usually, uh, right after I do a video of my latest thrift, I, uh, while I'm waiting for the video to upload, I try to put everything away. That's kind of my time now to do that. And, and so that's working out really good. Um, as far as things for in containers, um, one of the things that, you know, in the video I talked about was, uh, right away folding up paper to go inside your, um, signatures. So, well, this was just a few pages sitting on top, but here were the, um, the journal, that journal book. I right away took uh, a handful of sheets. I think I took 10 and I folded them so that they would fit in as a signature page. Now this is a regular eight and a half by 11, this coffee stained one. And I just showed you that I kind of make them the same size. If the paper's not wide enough, that's okay. Uh, you know, this could wrap around on this one like that. Um, and it's mixed with other papers. But I right away fold up 10 of them. Not that I fold them always the same way. Um, this one lended itself to folding it in half. It has a blank page on the inside, which is kind of cool. Um, so that is pretty much the same size as this. Yeah it's just a little bit shorter. So when I'm putting it in my signature, I will stagger it to fit. Um, so yeah, I did about uh, 10 of those. And then I had that, um, that eight and a half by 11 paper that had the duck on it. And, uh, I showed you that, you know, it's easy. If you don't want a duck on something, you just cover it. It's, it's not hard to do. And I, I left the white page inside because I don't mind white pages and it's just slightly larger than my eight and a half by 11 paper here. So I may have to trim it down before it goes in the journal or depending on where it sits. If it sits further on the outside, you know, it kind of wraps around the, the uh, pages. So, so it gets shorter and shorter as we go along. But at the same time, this also gets longer and longer on the inside. So, so yeah, there may be some trimming that I have to do eventually. But I right away folded uh, 10 of those too. And then I had the, the, uh, lined, um, legal notepad and did the same thing. It's not big enough to be a full eight and a half by 11 because I wanted the lines. So instead of folding it, um, this way, I folded it this way. And, and now I have these little flaps up here so that I could have the lines for writing on. So what this does is it gives you the full, um, height. I didn't go exactly cause I wanted it a little bit smaller, but, but then it's, um, it's got a little tuck spot here, or I could glue this down and make it a full pocket. If I do glue that down, then I cut this open and re re glue it. But that's something I can show you when we're doing, um, our back to basics. And then on this side, it's a bit wider of a page and it has a wider a tuck spot. So this is how I store the pages, um, pre-made, you know, I've, I've, I've done 10 of those now. And then I had another uh, pad that had different colored papers and I just grabbed a handful of each color and folded those in half as well. And I think these are eight and a half by 11. Yes. So, so once I've got all the pages folded, I have a box and I, and I do have a, a tutorial where I show you, oops, sorry about that. Uh, I do have a tutorial where I showed you how I, how I, um, built the box. Uh, it's just made out of uh, cardboard. 
um, like from packaging. And so I built the box. Uh, these still have to be decorated because I do like my boxes to be decorated. Um, but because I filled it and then I made two more since, um, it, it uh, hasn't got done yet. And, and, uh, so what I did is I made this box, uh, I think it's six inches. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown. You can look at the video and I will link the video below, but I made it six inches wide. So I knew that eight, eight and a half by 11 paper folded in half is only five and a half inches wide. So all of these papers now get stored in this box. And so I do have them sectioned off by different types of paper, but I have two more boxes too. So when I'm starting to put a journal together, I will now bring out these three boxes. I used to just have them in a pile, but, but now I got organized. And so I have these three boxes and some of them are more specialty papers that I only want for certain things, but I will now, uh, you know, come and put a signature together and and I've got this is a, a, a lightweight tissue now I've I have folded this in order to fold it to fit it's got a, a side flap and um, it might even still be a little bit taller I'll have to trim it down um, but I can I can pick through all of these different papers and pull out what I want to make a signature and then I can go back and do it all over again uh, because I folded 10 of everything minimum you know, that's what I do is I prepare myself as soon as that paper comes in. This way I don't have to go looking for it, you know, and, and sometimes you go, well, what kind of papers do I want to put in here? If you don't see it, you don't always think about it. So if you've got a container like this on your desk, yeah, maybe you don't need three containers like I do. Um, but, but maybe you have a container like this that you have on your desk with these different types of papers in it and it's ready to go for you. You just pull what you want and then add in anything else extra. Uh, some of you use digital papers. You can pre-fold those too and have them in a, in a box. Uh, because some of them, you sometimes when you make a digital or use a digital kit, you don't always use all the pages. So you can file those and, you know, depending on the style, you know, you may be able to incorporate them into other journals. So that's what I do. And now, you know, I've got some, some uh, flyers in here because I keep these things. Uh, Ted Falk, ha, I'm sure people in Manitoba are laughing at this. <laughs> It's still in my box. Um, you know, I have some uh, printed papers. Um, this is like a, a heavyweight tissue. I have uh, book pages folded in half. These are larger books. So Mary, this is a much larger book that I'm using a, a book page that I can fold in half. And some of these still need to be trimmed or they may need to have the edges folded over. If they're lightweight paper, I like to, to fold it over, but I don't worry about it until I'm actually going to use it in the book. Um, another paper, I just had this paper that had numbers on it. I think it was a catalog of sorts. Um, so I just folded those pages up. These are some of my, um, um, sampler pages that I've made. Um, this is an, uh, a digital sheet that I have in my coffee store. Um, but I just had some scrap fabrics on the, on the desk. And so I, I filled it up on both sides. Doesn't that look awesome? So again, this will be used in a journal, but I do want to decorate the edges. Um, some papers are white on the inside and like that duck paper, it was white on the inside. I don't mind if it's white, but sometimes I will take uh, a certain paper and I will, uh, run it through my printer and print on the other side of it. So, so that it isn't white. Um, but I like to do that for more prepared, uh, situations where I know a theme that I'm, I'm using. Cause I don't want to just have uh, pages in here inked, uh, that I'm not going to use. So these ones are here as, as a reminder and I have 10 of them, but this reminds me that I have more. So if I am doing a specific journal that I want a certain theme, then I would go back to this uh, pad of paper where I have it and I would pull 10 sheets or five sheets or whatever and print on them on the opposite side to have the colored paper. So going forward again, uh, there's another, um, sampler and, and I just did a couple of them to, to remind myself that I have this and that I should be doing this, but I just, I love how this turned out. And this is on coffee, uh, avocado dyed paper. We're going to do some of that this summer too. Uh, when Thelma comes, Thelma's coming in May now. So we may be outdoors doing, uh, some coffee staining and, um, uh, avocado dyeing later on this summer or this spring. 
This is just some puzzle paper. I just took apart a uh, one of those uh, crossword puzzle books. It's always fun to have. I'm just going through these just to show you what's in here, just to give you ideas of what to store. This was a, I think it was a joke book. I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember. But it's it was just junky paper that I said I can either make a master board or I can cover it. I can collage on it. Lots of coffee paper, including some that has doilies. Of course, now I s saw one and now I don't see it anymore. Oh, well, here we go. Um, some doily type papers with glue on it. Um, but these are all coffee dyed. I have some grid paper in here. The grid paper is too wide, so I had to fold it in threes because it was a legal size pad. I have some certificate paper. Anything I find, when it comes in the door, right away, 10 get folded. This is a larger music sheet that's printed on the one side and blank on the other. I love this paper. I'm going to be so sad when it's gone. Um, and then I have other music sheets in here, just plain brown paper, um, that lined a uh, school um, exercise book for, for writing on, for learning how to do cursive, which they don't do anymore. Um, <laughs> I guess they learned to print on here too. It was also too long, so I just folded one end in. Um, so these, again, they sit here to remind me this is the kinds of paper I have, and then I can pull them and use them. Uh, different types of ledger paper at the back here, all different kinds. So it depends on what I'm doing. So now having said that, I have three of these boxes. Um, two of them are filled with individual papers like this. Not completely filled because, you know, I, I do use them on a regular basis and, and I do add more as I go along. But the third uh, box is made up of pre-made signatures. Now, I'm not going to bring it, but what it is is that, you know, there could be 10 different sheets similar to this all put together already. So that sometimes if I just want to do a quick journal, I can just grab one of those and stitch them in together and bang, I'm done. Uh, especially if I'm doing one of those uh, manila envelope journals that it's just one signature. I usually put 10 to 12 pages and uh, knowing that I'm going to fill them to the maximum anyway. And so I, I just grab that and stitch it in to the cover and it's, it's done. It's very fast. Uh, what takes the longest is the decorating and the ephemera. But so, so this is how I store the, the paper that automatically comes in the door. Like what you saw, if you go back and look at my, my video from the other day, you'll see all of these papers in the beginning here that I've just folded and added into here. And I did try the divider thing to keep them divided. It's not going to work. I'm just going to probably just stick them in loosely without dividing them. But, but you know, if you are one of those people that likes to be organized, by all means, that, that will work as well. Some file folders with tabs, anything that's bigger than your, your um, eight and a half uh, height of paper um, will work just fine. So that's how I store these. And then... Um, sorry, I have to leave the, I just don't have enough room to have all this on the table at once. This is one of my ephemera boxes. I hope you can see all that. Isn't it lovely? This is actually very empty. I've got to get, oh, sorry, knock the camera again. I've got to get back into doing this. And, and the reason I'm telling you this is because, you know, Mary asked about containers, um, I do have a tutorial on making ephemera boxes and they have um, different boxes uh, that you add into the box to create the full box. Now this one was one of the original ones I made years ago that um, the, the uh, boxes are glued right in. Uh, but now I don't do that anymore because I want to be able to take this box out or, or whichever box out and I want to be able to rearrange them. So the other ones are... are um, and I say other ones because I have five of these. Five. Well, no, I have more than five. Um, but I have five of these with ephemera in them in different stages. So this is my partially decorated ephemera that is waiting for the right moment that it's going to get used. And so I have pockets made. I have some tags cut out. I have uh, some tags that are closer to bookmarks that are closer to being finished. I do have some larger tags in here. Um, 
but it's only a, a small portion of the types of things that I make. So um, I do have a tutorial on making this box and then I have a tutorial on making ephemera that is ready to go in these boxes. So it's not even at this decorated stage. It's just at blank where you just make the, the journal card. Um, and I, I show you different ways of doing that so that when you um, are working on a journal, then all you have to do is pull out those pieces as you need them and then um, decorate them to go into your journal because every journal has a different theme and stuff that you're you're doing so so I I have this box is kind of partially done I have another one is partially done and then I have two that is finished ephemera finished all I have to do is pick it out and throw it in my book I have tags journal cards all the things that I've mentioned before um, bookmarks uh, belly bands I have all that stuff is ready I, I don't have you know, I can't run and get it because it's uh, very full and it's on the other side of the room. But this was just the first one, so I grabbed it to show you. But I have uh, my ephemera in, in different stages. So I have the blanks that have nothing done to them. And I always have 10 of them on hand unless I've used a few. Uh, but when I get down to one, that's when I go back and get my book and and make 10 more because I don't want to be caught with nothing done. When I'm bored or, or when I want to do something different, I will take that box and I will decorate stuff, stuff to get it to this basic level. Or sometimes I make things when I'm uh, teaching or, you know, I make extra stuff when I'm working on a journal. And so it goes in, back into this box if I don't use it. You know, sometimes I will sit down and sew, sew around journal cards, um, but I haven't actually decorated them. I've just sewn them, put them together. This is a postcard actually. And, and so all I've done is I've, I've decorated on it and it's, it's uh, collaged on the back so that it's ready to write on. But now, you know, I want to maybe add a little tab or I maybe want to add some fabric to it or a snippet or a cluster or maybe a little pocket. So this is just sitting waiting uh, for an opportunity to go into a book. So that's the five books. I have, like I said, two that are partial, uh, two that are finished, and one that is just blank stuff with nothing done on it. Um, and that book box is looking a little thin. So I'm looking forward to when we get into doing these techniques because that will be part of doing techniques. So if you haven't made an ephemera box, I would suggest you make three. Um, and, and, uh, because one will be for your blanks, one will be for partially ready. And, uh, the third one will be for finished and, and you will get to that point where you, you need those boxes. I have five and then I have, uh, okay. One, two, three, four. I have six boxes of ephemera bits uh, that are all those things I just mentioned before. CD envelopes, uh, assorted envelopes, uh, flash cards, tags, um, playing cards, game cards. I'm, like I said, I'm just peeking through the crack here to see them. Um, but they are all things that I will also slip into journals um, that I will... Um, uh, you know, use, sometimes I decorate or stain or collage on, but, but it, it, they're there as a base. And then I have, uh, two more boxes that I put, um, is overflow. And, and that is for, uh, making my ephemera packs because I don't want to run around when I'm, when I'm, you know, when I do my thrifty gifty on, um, when I'm doing my thrift hauls and I, I put stuff, uh, together for my, my weekly winner, um, which is by the way, a couple of you haven't responded back yet. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So when I put my, my thrifty gifties together, I don't want to be digging in boxes and looking for stuff, uh, to put them together. Uh, I have a sort of a, a recipe of what I want to put in there. Uh, and so I just automatically start pulling and I pull all of those things. And again, when one slot gets empty and I go, oh my gosh, there aren't any more flashcards in this, this box, or there's no more tea bags in this box. Then I go to where I keep the tea bags that are kind of for my use and I will bring some forward or bring some flashcards forward. So I always know what I have loosely. Um, and I say loosely, uh, because I probably have about 20 boxes of paper I have that I brought from Manitoba almost a year and a half ago now, um, that I still have to unpack and, and get into these boxes. And I think there might even be a couple of, of, 
ephemera boxes in the boxes uh, that I did bring with me. But that just gives you an idea of how I store different papers. Now, if you look along the side here, these are all envelopes. And they all I've done is I've taken my leftover pieces of paper and I have a stack of envelopes on the side here and I I just cover them up completely and they are just sitting here covered, all completely covered on both sides. And then when I cut them in half, I instantly have two pockets. I have a, a video on that as well. It's one of the first videos I ever did. Um, so that sits on the side here and, and yes, once in a while it's very, very empty. And then later on it's very, very full. And I even had one here where, or a couple here where I just covered them in, in paper. Um, so again, once I, I cut these in half or I can cut it in, in, uh, one third and then two thirds, and then just do a little, um, thumb punch in there and they are pockets that are ready. They're floating pockets that are ready to go. But if you don't know what a floating pocket is, you'll learn about that next, next, uh, when we start our techniques a week. So these are just different things that are ready in different stages so that I can grab stuff quickly to work on. Um, I make a lot of journals. Um, you know, I, I, uh, sell my journals. I, I sell a lot of journals privately. I've had customers for, uh, you know, since the nineties, uh, because I used to be on eBay and Etsy. And so there are customers that request things that I make for them that you don't even get to see it because it's done and gone. So, so this is why I have a lot of ephemera on hand is to, to work on those things and to work on the different journals. So <laughs> Margaret, I'm sure you didn't quite accept, expect that big long answer. <laughs> so that's it for showing you that. I am going to do one more thing. Get this on out of my way before this video gets way too, too long. And that's to show you my latest digitals um, that are in my coffee shop. Now I only have one freebie this, this week. Uh, and I think I've told you many times is that's because my uh, subscribers that uh, uh, pay for the subscription on coffee um, they are behind in what they have for options, uh, compared to the freebies. The freebies have about 160 free digital collage sheets for you to download 160. I checked. This is number 160. And so, um, there's only, uh, one for my freebie section this time around and the rest are for the coffee. So I'm trying to get them caught up there. We're, we're getting there. So once they are caught up, I will probably try to do it a little bit more even, but you know, right now it's just getting everything else done. And I have so many uh, to make and add on to here that it's uh, crazy. Um, so, so, but if you are using my free ones and you've run out of things to do with 160 collage sheets, you can always uh, get the membership and there's, there's more and there will be more. And the membership is $3 a month and it's, you know, you come and go as you please. Uh, that's up to you if you want to stay around, but I promise you that every month I will make some nice collections. This is why it's, uh, I'm happy to have the members cause it makes me get things done. Um, so, so I appreciate my, my, uh, YouTube subscribers that are, um, subscribing to my coffee channel. Um, and yes, I want to make special things for them because it helps me to get this stuff done. So the freebie this week is, uh, kind of stained glass. Um, these were taken from, uh, early stained glass catalogs. And, um, so this is my free sheet this week. It's got a lot of these little round circular, colorful, um, spot elements that you can use and a few stained glass pieces that you can make again into spot elements or use in collage, as well as some decorative little squares and rectangles, and then two sort of washi tape pieces. Um, so this is in the free section in coffee. By the time this video airs, they will already be, uh, uploaded there and you can go and download this along with 159 others. If you haven't been there before, um, do follow my my channel there if you can, because then you'll get regular updates when I do upload new ones. So I, I did a whole stained glass theme and the rest of these are going to my, my, um, subscribers. And so there is a whole page of 
mm, kind of small journaling cards or, you know, mini tags and stuff that you can use. Um, some of them have a little bit of religious content if, but you know, not all of them. So, so, you know, depending on, uh, how you feel, uh, you know, you, you uh, may or may not like a certain sheet, but that's up to you. Um, so this one has some really beautiful arches. Um, these are great, uh, journaling tags to put in a book. There's a nice, beautiful bookmark there. Um, some more arches. The colors are just amazing in these stained glass pieces. And, and there's some miniature ones here along with the large arches. And another set here. These ones don't have any, um, uh, real inscriptions on them. So if you aren't fond of the idea of, oh, I've got to switch this around. I don't want to show you that one just yet. Saving that one for the end. Um, so yeah, if you know, if it, you don't like the religious content, that's, that's up to you. Everybody's different. So I don't want to say yay or nay to anything. And so, you know, I've used this and changed it a little bit if, um, I felt it was a little over the top, um, and then I made some, I, I enhanced, uh, some of the images and made these, uh, stained glass pieces, um, that can be journal cards. I have little squares on the bottom, but they're almost connected like a washi tape. So it can be used as a long strip or, uh, you know, a decorative strip on the edge of a page. So I did two different kinds of those. What these are going to be really nice for is if you print on vellum or on acetate, uh, clear acetate, like the um, overhead um, acetate sheets that they used to use. Um, they, they will be gorgeous to print on and use for envelopes and stuff. And then there's some circles, some longer um thin tags that could be used as little, um, bookmarks That's sticking to my fingers. Another, now this one, I also enhanced, uh, and did a whole series of the three there, but just different sizes and shapes to use. The colors are beautiful in, you know, the oranges and reds and pinks, and light greens. And then this is kind of a page of toppers, but my most favorite sheet, and I can't wait to work with this one, so maybe next week already. I'm calling these my toppers and tabs, uh, because I think these would be great uh, uh, if you have a rectangular piece of cardstock. This isn't the greatest color, but if you have a rectangular piece of cardstock, you can use it as a top by gluing it down um, to make a nice rounded top and turn it into a tag. It gives you a nice tab to pull it on. Um, I made them in uh, two inch, uh, two and a half inch and three inch sizes. That piece of glue was following me everywhere. So, so that they could easily, and this isn't the right size, of course. Uh, I think it's two, two and a half and three is the size I made them. So that you can easily use them yeah, this is almost, okay, three and three and a half, sorry. Yeah, three, three and a half and two and a half. So you can easily use them for topping or for tabs on the side of the page to pull out. If you print them in twos, then you can, you can double them up so that it's back to back and uh, make some really cute uh, elements for your, your journals. And that was just another one that was similar in this, in the styles. So I thought this would make some fun, uh, toppers uh, for, for cards. So if you can visualize what it would look like with that on top and then just odd pieces that could be, this could be like a little tuck on a tag or, or on a page. I mean, it's tiny, but it would still do the job for tucking something into it. These little corner ones. So yeah, lots of fun with that. So these will all be uploaded by the time you're watching this video. And like I said, these are all mostly for the members that are, are subscribing to my channel, but I also have a single page for um, my freebie section. Uh, and I will continue to work on both until I get them caught up. And I would love if, if some of you are working with these images, I know Barbara is, uh, shows a lot on Facebook of what she does with these images. I would, I would love to see some of the things that you guys are making with my, my, uh, digitals. 
I would just be over the top thrilled. So uh, please do share when you can. I, I'm re-inspired every time you show me something or you get excited. I get over the top excited about it as well. So that's it for my video for today. I think I've covered everything uh, with uh, what I could. And I hope I haven't bored you and I hope it's not too, too long. Um, uh, so tomorrow, Monday is the the uh, nesting journals uh, and Tuesday is the techniques uh, books. So I am over the top excited and thrilled uh, to get it uh, started on those projects. I will be working on them right after this video. And I look forward to seeing all of you there. So have yourself a very creative day. It is Sunday. Some of you are going back to work on Monday, but um, let's play as long as we can today. It is Sunday. Take the day off and enjoy it and uh, be creative. Have a great creative day and a creative week, and I look forward to seeing all of you soon. Bye for now.